this time slot, I know that there's going to be people that miss me as an individual, but this time slot has facilitated a lot of fun on this program. You enjoy the G-Bag Nation. Obviously, you had Eric and Zach in this mm-hmm. slot. Kane C were in the slot. Hell, the G-Bag Nation itself started in this slot. So it's a, it's a great place to be when it comes to the fan, and I hope that you continue to support it, dear listener. Fred, you'll you'll still be here, I'm sure, as well. I'll still log a few hours on the nighttime show. I'd love I, to hey, hear it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And uh, if I'm reading this right, uh, a, a man who's familiar with this time slot is joining us. My man, what's happening? What if I told you the 30 for 30 that they would do on the origination of the get right <laughs> with the two individuals be able to start together, become lifelong friends and brothers, and more importantly, uh, be forever tied to each other, Reg. What's going on, man? Hey, man, not much. Uh, so are we are we, we getting this get the right thing back together? Because apparently that's what everybody thinks. Uh, those rumors are uh, unfounded and <laughs> untrue. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, that will not not be the case. But that would have been one hell of a reunion, I can tell you that. Maybe when we get the uh, the reunion tour down the road at some point, we'll uh, we'll tell that story. But uh, no, nah, man. Uh, number one, I wanted to call you at this time slot because I got to get ready to go to bed here soon. I got a seven year old that get up at mm-hmm, six a.m. Mm-hmm, so I got to get mm-hmm. ready, get her ready. And your niece is uh, is in the bed and already. Uh, ready to go to school tomorrow. But uh, more importantly, uh, Rez, uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, I'm so happy for you, my guy. And uh, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. It's um, to see where you have come from and what you've been able to achieve. Uh, and for me to be able to be a small part of your journey uh, is one of the great things for me to experience in my, in my career, man. And, um, you know, the story of us being able to put this show together and to see where we were able to take it and the legacy that you continued to carry with it uh, after, you know, you told me it was time to get out of here so mm-hmm. you could run the show yourself. That's right. Um, <laughs> is, um, it's been phenomenal to see, man. So um, I tell, I'll tell a quick story because I, I know you'll appreciate it because this is how meticulous Reg is when it comes to his preparation and his work. So when we were coming up with the show, of the get right, we were throwing names back and forth, trying to figure out, you know, what the name of the show was going to be. I would throw one out, and he'd be like, "Nah, Kev, I don't know if I'm feeling that." I he had throwing out to me, I'm like, "Nah, I don't know if he's feeling that one." But we finally came up with one. He was like, "Hey, I, I got it." He's like, "The get right," and I thought about it, and I don't know if I've ever told you this part, but at first I wasn't for real feeling it, but mm-hmm. then it just, as I marinated on it a little bit more. It, it felt right because I knew what we had built together, what we were going to build together, uh, it was going to be right. And to get it right, you got to start with the get right. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I appreciate the way that you have made me better uh, as a broadcaster, but most importantly, the listener has become much better because uh, of you being on the, on the airway. So uh, you are not just a friend for life, my man, you are a brother for life. You look, there are very few people who I let in um, from a personal standpoint uh, to the point where they come to know my wife and my family and uh, even hold my child. And you are one of those, one of those people. So I want you to know how much of a special place you have uh, in my heart, man. And I'm so thrilled to see uh, and hear what you're going to be doing down there in Houston, my guy. I appreciate that, my man. I want to be very, I'm very proud of myself for not tearing up during that particular um, segment of things. <laughs> I was trying to make it happen, too. Well, you came close. Yeah. Came close. <laughs> yeah, uh, and from the six, six, seven, eight, as we're trying to make dreams come true out here. This week, baby. Oh, man, this week. Man, that was the other thing, too, man. All the things this week. Uh, you making fun of my age That's constantly right. uh, on the air. You let me know that I'm, you know, was 36 That's at the correct. time. Um, you know, everything that we came up with between uh, my favorite segment, uh, this or that, or <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, are we getting a this or that tonight? I hope we get some this or that because I, I want that for sure on the nope. last show. Wow, wow, of course. You can't always uh, get what Fred, you, you want. Make him do this to that, please. Before, uh, I don't have it planned. You, you, you can say that. It's not, ever, it's not planned. Did it's you not, ever? It's not, that is fair. That is fair. Um, okay. All right. All right. All right, Kate. Um, All right, my man. Are you, are you throwing me off the air? Is that <laughs> no. You it was, oh. Is that what you're doing? I felt like there was a real pregnant pause there where you're like, get, get the hell off the air. 
and uh, so I can run and talk about Ezekiel Elliott or something like he's going to do something. But anyway. Wow, wow. Uh, okay, well, look, let's bring you into the segment then <laughs> since you, since you want to oh, hang out so okay. bad. No, okay, so uh, <laughs> y- y- yo what man's. What a segue. What y- a segue. Yo man's. You, you, I know. Uh, Maurice My Jones man. Drew. Yeah, Hold yo man's. Now. Yo man's. Maurice no, Jones Drew. no. Uh, put out oh. an interesting piece earlier today on NFL.com where he listed stop out. right there. He ranked. You stop right there. Okay. All right. All right. I know sometimes MJD goes big as an analyst. However. Like I, you, you lost me at MJD put out something on NFL.com. You could have left it out, right? You could have stopped right there. However, uh, when it comes to running backs, like you have to understand he is an expert in that way. He put out a ranking, and as you go through the ranking, obviously you have someone like clearly Christian McCaffrey is number one. He has Derrick mm-hmm. Henry still very high in this list. As you're running through it, you get uh, to obviously you know that Ezekiel Elliott is diminished, and he acknowledges that. However, he has Ezekiel Elliott ranked as 25 on the list of the top 32 uh, running backs in the NFL, and that feels fair, I imagine. But you go further down the list, and at 29, he has Tony Pollard here, who was the lead back. For this running back, for this team last year, and this team running wise was middling, right? But Ezekiel mm-hmm. Elliott, I understand that we view him as not—he's definitely not the Ezek, Ezekiel Elliott of before. And I know that we also had negative feelings just because of the framework of his contract. Is it possible that he still has just a little bit, and possibly that the running or the the blocking could be a little bit better? You look at Tyler Smith and um and Zach Martin, and those are probably the best guard pairing, maybe the top three if you want to stretch this guard pairing in the league you have the strength on the offensive line and I look I am judging off of a preseason game but it looked like they were blocking up the run a little bit better is it possible that we've somehow gotten a little too negative on the Cowboys run game headed into the season um maybe if you're a believer in the running back by committee that they're going to in you know deploy this year between Zeke you know, Rico Dowdle, you know, we'll see what Malik Davis, you know, possibly has, you know, if Royce Freeman comes back from injury, you know, there's a lot of guys in that room that they're trying to squeeze and figure out, you know, who's going to be as productive as they can be behind it. Like somebody's got to establish themselves as the lead back. And I would hope that would be, you know, Rico Dowdle in this case. I mean, honestly, Zeke has so much mileage on him at this point. And even with him being as effective as he was, especially in the second half of the year, you know, last year for New England as a pass catcher, what he was doing, there's still a lot of wear and tear on that body. And I feel like if the Cowboys are going to be as successful as they believe they can in the run game, it starts with Rico Dowdle being your quote-unquote feature back and Zeke being your situational guy. Like his ability maybe on, you know, third and short, you know, fourth and short, you know, goal line situation where he can really be able to use his physicality yeah, that makes sense, but I don't – Zeke at this point in his career, for me, veteran leadership can bring you a certain measure of physicality. Leadership, obviously, he's going to bring for the entire football team. But this is not a team that should feature Ezekiel Elliott as its number one his number one back. Like, I, I believe Tony Pollard is a better back at this point, you know, than Zeke is. I think there's there more explosion with Tony Pollard and that kind of thing. So – uh, to the idea of Maurice Jones Drew's list, uh, I don't think he has it right when it comes to who is the better backup between those two. But yeah, the Cowboys. Hopefully, Zeke will find some more holes because of pause because he can be wow. able to run through um, what should be a good offensive line, particularly as you mentioned, you know, with the guard play of Tyler Smith and Zach Martin. But hopefully. More so for Terrence Steele in that right side as well. Hopefully he can kind of get back to some of that form uh, that we know is, especially as a as a run blocker. So Zeke may find some success, but I'm not particularly counting on it, if you're asking me. Am I wallet, I Fred? Am I wallet here? What, that they're too, what, that we're not giving them enough credit? Yeah, I we, mean, uh, have we gotten too, too negative, too down on this running game? I mean, I I, I'm not going to say it's down great. enough. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, if we're being honest with ourselves. I mean, if we go into this te- season and – Zeke Elliott is your number one running back. I mean, that, that, that just adds to the list of folly that has been the Cowboys offseason. I mean, you could almost argue that the running back room is a microcosm of just how dysfunctional this offseason has been for this Dallas Cowboy team. Throw into the fact that, you know, we keep, and I keep hearing about how Rico Daddle can't stay healthy. 
he's going into year four. Outside of year two, when he only suited up for fit for five games, year one he suited up for five, uh, fifteen. Last year he suited up for sixteen. Okay, so at two out of three seasons he's been there almost every game. So this idea that he's been injury plagued, yes, year two he was, but the other two seasons he just wasn't good. He just wasn't, and I get it. You know, maybe you know your rookie year. I'll I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because okay, you had Zeke and you Pollard had Zeke in and, a, and a healthy Pollard. But what was his excuse last year? All right, I mean, you know, you had the opportunity last year, and again, this is an NFL where if you're a running back, all right, I mean, it's it's not. I mean, we've we've devalued it so much to where a guy like a Rico Daddle should be able to come in yeah. if you're that dude, or if you've got. I mean, Pacheco did ability of that City. dude, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, again, that's a little bit different deal as far as Isaiah Pacheco. But see, here's the difference between Isaiah Pacheco and Rico Daddle. Isaiah Pacheco sees the opportunity. Yeah. And guess what? Rico and, and Isaiah Pacheco, for all intents and purposes, is a good NFL running back. Rico Daddle, again, we're going into year four. And w- w- what did Bill Parcells say? By year three, you we know who you are at that point. Now, again, maybe year two kind of set him back a little bit. But, again, I'm just Rico Daddle. Zeke Elliott, Malik Davis, who's not lighting the world on fire, and five foot nothing Deuce Vaughn. I mean, you that's what we're going. All that out that's there. what we're going okay. into. I yeah. mean, you know, I mean, look, I get, it. I know that's your, your team and all mm-hmm, e ball, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, you got a better chance at, at, at running the rock. Okay. All right. Than our boy Deuce Vaughn. Okay. Well, I just look. I was trying to see. I saw that uh, MJD KG's favorite. You know, put out a list, and I it got not me at thinking. All. Not at all. Not at all. KG, uh, I, I love you, my man. Like you said, you are you're very hundred percent correct, man. We're brothers, and uh, yeah, I don't I don't I don't know what else to say that that won't make me cry. You're still this terrible at dismounts. You're still terrible at dismounts. That's right. Completely. That's right. And so you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ignore the dismount. KG, talk to you later, buddy. Wait, 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 okay. wait. Before all right. before I go, okay. before I go. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you for that. Uh, number two, Fred, as a fellow um, Midwestern, I was born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. Hey! Um, the, uh, Wait, yeah, where'd, you yeah, 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 yeah. where'd you go to high school? Where'd you go to high school? I went to the, the now defunct uh, Hickman Mills High School. Hickman uh, Mills. Well, you guys, pur- yeah. you guys were purple and yellow, were you not? Hell no. You, no, asked, no, no. Brown, you asked him the brown, wrong question. Brown and, brown and white. You asked brown, him the wrong we question. Cougars. We were the Cougars. What? Oh. We were the Cougars. Yeah, we were the Hickman Mills High School Cougars, class of 2005. Shout out to us. The right question um, was where to go to college. Oh, wait, are you a K-Stater? Oh, Worse. Hell no. Oh, are you a Mizzou no, guy? No. That's right. That's right. Black <laughs> and gold, baby. M-I-Z. Black and gold, baby. M-I-Z. You know what I have a beef with, though? You know how many times? Uh, I'm just going to say this since I got you on here. Sorry, boss. I've I just, the clock is dead. There's been so many times. So my cousin, uh, who's like a brother to me, we grew up together. He went. He, he played football at Mizzou. And, of course, you know, being the superior journalism school, the William Allen White School of Journalism, when you say rock chalk to anybody that went to KU, when you say rock chalk, they look back and they say either rock chalk or Jayhawk. How many times I've seen somebody in a Mizzou shirt and I say M-I-Z and they just crickets, nothing. Very, very disheartening. He said y'all not real. Very disheartening that I don't see the same kind of love. That's because we have good sense and recognize who's, yeah. you know, is that what, you, is that what y'all call here, it? Is that what y'all call it? You know, we got good sense, the best journalism school, on, you know, in the country. Um, but, yeah, it is what it is. But I, I wanted to say I was disappointed that you didn't bring, you know, some Gates with you, some Arthur Bryant's with you, you know, something. Uh, I am a Gates to, guy. To, but, man, I've been out of the Midwest uh, for, I mean, you got to remember, I came here from Houston, though. So, okay. Uh, I've, that's, dude, I, that's I've been out of the Midwest for a minute. I haven't been. As That's a matter of fact, I, I will put it to you like this. I, I graduated from the University of Kansas in 2007, and outside of my son That's being. Unfortunate. Uh, That's unfortunate. Well, That's okay. Hey, look, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> somebody's got to do it. Uh, we're, still, hey, we're still waiting on a tournament win for you guys. Um, oh, relax. That's what I like. Relax. That's what relax. I like. What, what you guys relax. want? I, I, how many games did you guys win in the SEC this past season? They're actually pretty good football. Right, no, no, I'm talking about basketball. Ah, okay. No, I'm talking about I forgot. Yeah, y'all basketball school. I'm talking about basketball. Forgot about that. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I don't recognize Mizzou as a basketball program in the SEC these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nobody else does either. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Touche. Well, that's nice. Look but you this. know what? Hey, I'll tell you what, though. I appreciate I'll, I'll say this, and I'll shut up. I'll say this, because I lived in Columbia for a hot minute once upon a time. And I will say this. it is Missouri is a sleeping giant if it really wanted to be. Because I'm going to tell you right now, between St. Louis, Kansas City, and the Ozarks, y'all got nobody to recruit against. And there is a lot of talent in those three areas. You got world-class facilities and and maybe the cherry on top, still a Nike school, somehow, some way, 
Get it together, Mizzou. Get it together. I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for letting me uh, barge in on, on your show. Uh, and, Reg, again, congratulations, my guy. I'm proud of you. Uh, and I'll be seeing you soon, my guy. I'll be seeing you real soon. 